Hey guys, this is Hellhades. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. So we're going to have a look through patch 1.15. Is there anything different to what we'd already seen up, up early? Just come in now, 1.15. There's a bit of issue getting the patch in and away, but it's in now. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So there's a few bits in here which uh, we completely knew about, and there's a few other bits that I've found as I've gone through the game which seem a little bit different. So let's have a check out of what we've got. So Clan Boss HP now. Um, I've checked it, so I've done a fight on um, on normal, on easy, sorry. What happens is someone beats the clan boss, the affinity does change, the affinity stays changed. So I've gone in, I've attacked it afterwards, got the max key. What you will find though is you will not get your reward now until the next day. So I've I've done max damage here, there's no kind of claim reward available because the clan boss Although it says zero HP, it's not officially dead. Um, the clan boss is still well and truly alive with like one HP left. So you won't get any of your rewards on the day anymore, but you will be able to claim as many chests as you can beat. So that's quite an interesting change. It does mean when they drop us a whole bunch of these keys, which they seem to do, or we get one of these progression rewards like I had today where I got an extra key, it does mean there's actually some sort of purpose for it now, which is good. Um, and you know, for anyone that is at my sort of stage where I can beat Ultra Nightmare, Nightmare, and Brutal in the same day, I'm going to be able to get a few more rewards than I was getting before. Also means that clans can now try and grow. Uh, I've already been noticing actually that some of the player power levels are growing in the clans. If you look here at um, rankings, Immortal Hordes have come from nowhere. They're now at a kind of high ranking point player power. Um, Gods and Legends has gone up a huge amount. I know Gallifrey, which I'm part of, are kind of moving some people around to kind of get some of the big hitters in. So interesting to see what happens now with clans and whether there's a bit more of a structure around that. And also whether they bring something out now that brings some sort of competitive element to clans, which I think we really need in this game. Um, so that's cool. That's a good change. So let's look at a few more then. Um, Increase level cap from 60 to 100. So we talked about this beforehand. So basically, everyone now is going to start to grow from level 60 up to 100. The energy will not change. That's probably the worst thing about the patch. Why not just give us another two energy per level? Um, just seems like a just seems so short-sighted to me. But anyway, I'm not going to dwell on it again. Um, you know my thoughts on that one. Just seems a bit silly. But is there some more progression rewards? Then let's see what we got. This is what we were getting early game, leveling up, a few books, a few gems, and when you got to 60, you got that sacred shard. So now, what we got? 65, 300 gems. Actually, not bad. Legendary tomes. We didn't get any legendary tomes beforehand. Look at this. Legendary tomes, a void shard, 5 million in silver. It's quite a juicy amount. 500 gems. It's actually pretty good. And a sacred again. So these progression rewards, not bad. Not bad. Um, it's all in all, you're going to get yourself three books, 800 gems, a couple of shards, and 5 million silver. It's actually not bad. That is not bad. I don't know if you also get additional rewards from 60 to 61. I doubt it. You probably just get your energy refill like beforehand. Um, maybe a few gems in between. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll see as that goes. But the progression rewards are not bad. They're probably going to be level packs. It's the main reason they did it, guys. Let's be honest. They want to sell those level packs when you get to 65, 70, all that sort of stuff. So what else have we got then? Increased drops from gold four. Um, so what it's saying here is you're now going to get 10 rewards drop from the arena chest if you're in gold four. Uh, and they can be legendary artifacts as well. I like that they can be legendary. Um, less, we also know that a lot of the artifacts you get from gold four are like four star. Um, you get the odd six star piece. The fact that it can be legendary now is good. Let's hope that they're decent pieces. Um, but that's not going to change. Let's be honest, that's not changed. There's none of the kind of platinum tier dropping down. Um, they've left platinum as still 300 people, which I think is way too small. So I hope they do change that. The tournaments then. The, the tournaments have changed, and I like this change. So I play another game called Dragon Champions, and in that game... Um, Basically, what you get is tournaments or events, they call it, where you have to select a certain champion. So it'll be select this champion 
and then two of this class, so you, know, you might call it two from spirit affinity, two from force affinity. Um, or in this game, they might say you have to play with all rares or all epics in this tournament, which I like. I think that could be good fun. It could bring a bit of a mix up to the, the kind of different tournaments. You won't just be wailing out with your main top five legendaries every tournament. So I do like that. Um, so saying here, you might only use people from a certain alliance. Um, which if you know about the, I'll show you actually, because most people probably don't know about this because it's not used yet in the game. But if you see here, you've got the different factions and then these four form the Telerian Alliance, which we've not used at all for this game yet. Um, Galen packed this alliance here, corrupted. And then at the moment, the dwarves are kind of pretty lonely in the Nyressen Union, but that's what they mean about alliances. So that could be quite fun. Um, and then they've also added that that arena can be part of that tournament structure. So, um, which again, I, I actually like it. I, I like that arena can go into that, and I like that they're going to be mixing it up to say you have to use a specific type. Just makes it more varied. Makes you think about your teams a bit more. Um, so it should be good fun. Now, after that, we've got a bunch of kind of fixes here. So, fixes on Skull Lord, fixes on Tower and Titans. It's not like a, a buff or a nerf situation on these. It's just a fix. We do have people like Richtoff the Bold is now going to have his um, his big damage steal on a, um, a multiplier instead of an additive, which means that his critical damage can multiply very high. I'm quite interested to see what sort of damage this guy does now. It could be bonkers damage now. So I'd be interested to see what happens there. And then there's a bunch of fixes around the same sort of thing, around multipliers. So Duchess, for example, cannot now absolutely shield someone and get them like a 100% damage reduction um, kind of comp. So that's good. I think they've done the right thing there. It would just be um, some sort of mild fixes. There's also some visual fixes. So um, some things which weren't working correctly, which they've just fixed, which is good. Uh, all of these different champions have got slightly different things, but it's all just bug fixes, guys. Nothing kind of crazy here. Um, most of these actually have been in the kind of um, content creators chat. So we've been going through to our contact and been saying, look, guys, fix this. It's causing a massive problem in the game. Uh, one of the ones I put out there was Duchess. Well, if, if you partnered someone with Duchess in the arena, there's a chance that that and someone hit them with an AOE there was a chance that the first hit of the AOE hit for zero. So I was trying to kill like a Rotus combo, and Rotus would take the first hit at zero, and then the second hit is passive procs. So all of a sudden you're like, well, hold on a minute. I should have killed him, but in fact, he's killing my whole team. So that's good. They fixed the matchmaking system in Plat, so that first can always attack second, even if they're more points ahead. That's gonna be fine for the whole top 10. Um, from what they're saying, I think it might be more than top 10, actually. So that would be good to see. Um, they've added some of the, the fixes to things like selling accessories from your battle window if you're killing spider. Um, let's do a quick spider run and see if that works. I'll just get a speed team in. Quick. So all of this stuff feels, feels pretty solid, guys. It feels like all positive stuff, nothing to to kind of be upset about but also nothing to be excited about either um what does i want draco draco but yes there's no like big content drop it's just a, a patch full of fixes you know bug fixes um and that type of thing so let's just see what happens here take down take down snoop Oh, why is she not doing her ability there? She should normally kill her. Maybe I got the wrong one. Maybe I got the wrong one, or maybe they changed something. She should normally do a, a heart seeker straight away there. And that's normally like a 13 second time for me. Now everyone's getting killed. Come on, Draco, finish the job. 
somewhat. <laughs> okay, so what it's saying here is you can now go in and sell it. Yeah, okay. So we can now go in, sell it from here. Good. Uh, and we can also go in, if you've got any in here stored up, I don't, but if you had any there, then you could also sell from there, which is good. Uh, one of the other things that they've added in is from the tavern now, you can, um, there are fusible champions shown like this. See this little blue circle? That means that they're involved in some sort of fusion that you've got live. So if I was to go in here, then they would feature somewhere here. There. So he's a fusible champ, therefore he's got that little blue circle. And if I was to try and feed him to someone that needs to level up. Uh, do I have any level threes? Yeah. So if I try and feed a fusible champ like this, it would give me a little warning message. This champion's part of a fusion. You sure you want to do it? So I like that. I think that's good. Um, good little addition to the game. You can also, from the tavern now, unlock or lock somebody. So if I wanted to feed somebody like a, an epic from my pool, like Seer, I've already got Seer somewhere else, I can turn off a locked and use her as food. So all good, like that, that's a decent change. Um, like I said earlier, there's nothing kind of crazy new in here, guys, but little by little improvements to the game um, can't be a bad thing. Let's just hope that 1.16 is something bigger so they've added something else as well to the shop. It's not as part of the patch notes that I've seen, but for the first time you purchase some of these things, you get it on a two for one. The books here, um, nothing in the sort of gem shop, nothing here. That's my own stuff, um, but stuff like this. So any shard packs, any ascension packs, I mean, these for me are not worth their money anyway, even at two for one, they're not worth their money. Perhaps with the exception of this, uh, this rookie pack, Rookie pack's actually not bad value for this game. The rest of it is, is terrible value, I think. Maybe this, on a two for one, maybe this becomes worth it now. Becomes a pound per per shard pool, which is not terrible. Um, what's this here? Six pack. What is that saying? What do you actually get with this? One shard. Oh no, that's a dreadful deal, dreadful deal. And that's six plus six, 12 shards. It just feels like it's a dreadful deal. So this is the only one I'd, I'd still invest in myself. Nothing else feels like it's worth it. Two for one, what'd you get here? One plus one. I mean, it's just ludicrous amounts of money. Um, anyway, let me know what you think on the patch, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you all soon.